Welcome back guys. For today's video tutorial, I'm gonna have a look over a sensor that is LSM330. To gain more knowledge about this sensor, let's have a look over the website and that's uh, controleverything.com and have a search for this sensor and you can see more about this. So let's see what we got. Now, I will be interfacing the sensor LSM330 with a Raspberry Pi and a Python code. For that, let's go to resource tab and here comes the python code sample now you can download the python code sample as zip file from here from this very site and you can also have the code from github repository that is control everything community now you can have two ways by which you can get the code choice is yours now what we require is some hardware and so that we can some make some connections for the working for this particular sensor let's have a look over it this here is our sensor lsm double three O which we are going to be setting up today in addition to this we need a Raspberry Pi now to provide the solution of connections among the sensor and the Pi and to further make this connection a lot easier and also to make connections with the other I2C devices we need this I2C adapter or ship this is available on the website control everything.com now make this connection and gently place the I2C shield over the GPI pins of the Raspberry Pi now, to make a connection among the sensor and the shield, the binding factor is this, a connecting cable. Now make the connection among the sensor and the cable like this and make sure that the brown wire of the cable should be connected to the ground terminal of the sensor and similarly, we have to follow this fundamental rule for the I2C shield. So the connection will look like this. Now we need to power up our Raspberry Pi and for that, a micro USB cable comes into the picture. Gently put it over the power jack. Now we need to connect the Raspberry Pi with the internet. Now we have two options. The first is an ethernet cable which you are able to see on my screen. Gently put it over the ethernet jack. In case if you don't have the cable, ethernet cable, you can also use adapter, a nano Wi-Fi USB adapter and you can put it on the USB jack. So, hence we are done with the connections. These are the connections we require for the working of this particular sensor. Now why don't we have a look over the code, the explanation and the working so that we can interface this. Well as we are done with the connections part for the hardware section, now what we require is the python code so that we can interface the sensor with that. So for that log into github.com first of all and here we have to search for the repository that is control everything community, the official repository for control everything.com and here we go. Now this is the sensor we are looking forward and now python code is here but before moving to the code explanation let's have a look over the instructions we need to follow to cover up this code uh, download and install the SMBus library on the Raspberry Pi we have used the SMBus library on this code and this is the link which will help us to install SMBus properly so for better clarifications Let's have a look over this link and as you can see this python modules allow SMBus access to the I2C dev interface on the Linux host which include the Raspberry Pi. Now all the relevant information as you can see the example is there, the commands and everything is being collaboratively there for understanding. Now what we require is to follow these and we can install easily. Now get back to the code and here we go as you can see it's a .py extension file the first thing you notice in the code that we have imported SMBus and time libraries and the address of the sensor for gyroscope uh, before going to the code let me tell you that it's a dual address sensor one address is for gyroscope and the other is for accelerometer so first of all we will be covering for the section of gyroscope so address of gyroscope is 0x6a and we have selected the control register one that is 0x20 the command we have sent here is power on data selection equal to 95 hertz and x y and z axis enabled it's 0x0 now the writing section is here then we have to read the data right we are reading the data from 0x28 and we are reading the x axis as you can see now this is a conversion part of x axis data the data is being continuously monitored we are being provided the values and then we have the conversion for x axis for the gyroscope similarly 
this is the command for and the conversion for a y axis data for the gyroscope and then the z axis so we are done with the section for gyroscope now we are doing for the accelerometer and the address for accelerometer is 0x1b 29 is the decimal equivalent for that we have selected the control list over that is 0x20 and the command we want to send here is 0x67 which confirms for power on data selection rate equal to 100 hertz along with x y z axis enabled and the writing section is here now for the reading part we have similarly followed the suit as we did for the gyroscope this is our read data back from 0x28 as you can see x axis y axis x axis lsv msv for acceleration data as you can see this is the command for that and here we have the conversion data according to the data sheet Similarly, for the y-axis acceleration data and the z-axis acceleration data. Now, we are done with the calculations. And we have all the values stored in these variables. At the very end of our code, we have the output data on the screen, which we have formatted to the decimal value. And the, its raw values of x-axis, y-axis, z-axis rotation, along with the acceleration in y, z, and x-axis. Y, z, yes. That's correct. X, Y, Z axis. Uh, now, this is the values we got. This is a very generalized code. As you can see, it's a simple Python code. You can follow it up on the GitHub on the website also. Now, what do we require is very interesting and it's called the walking environment. So let's have a walking part and let's see how it works with the sensor. Now, what we require is to show the working of this sensor using this Python code. And so for that, copy this entire Python code and open up the Raspberry Pi terminal here in the VI editor we have to create a new file sm330.py which is the extension here paste the code and save it and this is the command to run as you can see on my screen and here we go yeah again a command there now when I rotate the sensor as you can see there is a change in acceleration and rotation data for x, y and z axis. Now when I again do that, there is again a change. And continuously following this pursuit, we have a lot of values where we can have rotational and acceleration data for x, y and z axis. So this is how our Python code works for this sensor. Now let's have a look over its benefits, features and what are the applications that we intend to do with this particular sensor LSM330. So just now we have seen the working of this sensor LSM330. So let's have a look over the benefits, features and the applications for this particular sensor. As you can see, um, the LSM330 is a system in package featuring a 3D digital accelerometer with two embedded state machines that can be programmed to implement autonomous applications and a 3D digital gyroscope. The various sensing elements are manufactured using specialized micro machining processes where the IC interface are developed using CMOS technology. Now the LSM330 has a user selectable full acceleration range and an angular range of good 250, 500, 1000 dps plus minus. The accelerometer and gyroscope sensors can be either activated or separately put in power down sleep mode for applications optimized for power saving and these include GPIS, navigation systems, impact recognition and logging, gaming and virtual reality input devices, intelligent power saving for handheld devices and a lot more. This sensor is available on this website and you can purchase it from here and the relevant code is available on this website. You go to resource tab and you can get it down there. Now you can also get the code from github repository that is control everything community so at the very end let's summarize what we have done this video we have the explanation the code the hardware connections and a lot more stuff so i just want to make it clear that in case if you are in a kind of thought that you are left without fully understanding any part in this video till now you can have your queries on control everything.com and you can post your comments your queries also on the community page now, if you want to check some articles, blogs relevant to this video, you can have a look over instructables.com. And if you want to subscribe video tutorials like these, you can go to our YouTube channel. I hope you found this video useful and I have a lot more projects coming on my way on the YouTube channel also.
So till then you enjoy yourself and thanks for watching.